Okay, today's gonna be a quickie, real fast here. I'm doing a uh, crankshaft position sensor on a 97 Lincoln Town Car with a 4.6 in it. This should be the same on all the 4.6s. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, uh, because they're all the same configuration as far as I know. Ford, Mercury, uh, Lincoln, all of them on the 4.6. Uh, occasionally these things, uh, well with the aftermarket especially, um, and the humidity, when it gets high humidity and these things get old, they're in a very uh, tight spot under the car and they're in a uh, kind of a bad location. You can see right here where it's at and the compressor is in the way. Um, okay we can see it, it's right there. So that has to come out and that goes in as such so you see how much room we're going to need. And it's just loosening the four bolts up on the compressor and pulling it out of the way enough to get that out of there. Um, the uh, uh, the problem is when the moisture gets in there, they don't like to fire up like early in the morning or whatever. If you drive the car normally every day, um, they don't go quite as quickly. But um, anyway, okay, I uh, wanted to mention uh, when replacing these things, lubricate up this O-ring, put some Vaseline on it, or any other type of, uh, you know, lubrication. You can even use a little bit of wheel bearing grease, it won't hurt that thing. Um, make sure your uh, grommet is uh, out of there. As you'll see, the, uh, the grommet, that orange piece right there, is the rubber. And hang on a minute, let me get um, a small screwdriver. I don't seem to have one here right now, let me try this one. And we'll pull that out. Uh, there. Okay. So that, that rubber seal goes into the connector. God damn it, I wish I can't do this with one hand. Uh, alright, so there it is. Anyway, there it is. It's, uh, pushed in there. And also, uh, what I do is I put dielectric grease in there and uh, that keeps some of the moisture out because this does uh, go up. Now this does have a pan, a splash pan, which uh, I do put back on the car, but uh, a lot of them are missing that splash pan because of uh, lazy mechanics that don't want to put them back on or they've gotten damaged and somebody doesn't want to replace the, uh, the splash pan. Uh, because they're too cheap to do it and uh, as these cars get older of course the, the people that own them are going to buy them for cheaper and cheaper and they don't you know don't, don't want to put the money into them so that'll be affected by a lot of water this is why the factory put that pan on there it's not to be an annoyance there's a good fucking reason for it so uh, in either case I'm going to go ahead and pull that out and I'll start the uh, camera back up again I'll quit talking here and I'll show you once the compressor's out of the way. Alright, compressor is out of the way. This zip boom, just a couple of the bolts, just leave the ones hanging that don't come out real easy. There's the uh, sensor. Take the screw out that holds it in. Of course, I forgot to mention you have to loosen the belt. <laughs> That's why this wrench is in there. Uh, let's see, can I see this? It'd be so much nicer if somebody else could film while I'm doing this, but... And anyway, just twist this a little bit. Pull on it. There you go. There's the sensor. The offending son of a bitch that, uh... Now, of course, if it ever lets you down, you can always spray it with a little WD-40 from above try to dissipate the moisture and see if that works. It's worked a couple times for me when I've gotten in it. Uh, last time it, it wouldn't fire up and of course I test for you know see if I got fuel pressure on the rail and then spark immediately and uh, I saw the spark was so intermittent 
uh, sprayed a little WD-40 on that uh, on that crank position sensor and uh, fired right up. So uh, I didn't even bother hooking the uh, scanner into it uh, because usually once it fires up or if you do a, a key on engine running test, well, goddamn, the engine's running. Key on key on engine off test. Half the time these sensors don't show up. So. Uh, you know, uh, you just got to go with a different diagnostic routine. All right, so let me cram that back in there, and then we'll uh, go from I there. I wanted to mention, I keep forgetting things to talk about because, to me, this comes naturally. But uh, when you uh, put the belt back on, if you're underneath the car, um, you know, make sure that the belt is on all the grooves on all the pulleys. Uh, because a lot of times when you let up tension, you know, the belt will kind of jump off uh, some of the other pulleys. It won't stay tight where it's at. So before you fire this thing up, uh, make sure that the belt is in, you know, each groove where it should be. And up top, uh, you can hardly see it, the alternator. Uh, the rest of them are reverse type pulleys. They're just smooth. Uh, but make sure they're riding uh, relatively normal. So, uh, and uh, also wanted to mention to the gentleman that uh, made a remark on the uh, ball joint video when I was doing a ball joint on this a long time ago, <laughs> but I haven't had the car up on the left. He reminded me to grease the, uh, the stops for the, uh, I don't know if you can see that, there we go. Okay, the stops for the wheel, you know, when you turn it hard. Um, because there was rust on there and he did say, you know, grease them up. Now, uh, I have done it, so, uh, you know, it's something you don't think about often and I, I tend to forget too, but uh, when I do something like that, I do it with uh, marine grease. I don't use regular, uh, uh, you know, wheel bearing grease or anything like that, and I always keep marine grease around for other little jobs, you know, especially on the motorcycle, uh, greasing with marine grease, you know, is a lot uh, better for anything that uh, is going to be affected with water. So, uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's the end of it. So I'm going to uh, check the undercarriage over now while I have it up on the lift, check the brakes, check uh, suspension, check my rear end fluid. Uh, nothing's leaking on the car, uh, knock on wood, uh, hope it never does, <laughs> I don't feel like doing this shit anymore, and, uh, not really able to, to do any of the hard, you know, heavy, heavy stuff anyway, so, uh, check my tire pressures, you know, that kind of crap, uh, and then, uh, I'll put the, uh, belly pan back on, the splash pan, and, uh, that'll be the, the event for today. So uh, hopefully it helps somebody. I know this is a simple job, but there are a few other little minor details involved. To um, yeah, I know we got we got Ripley there. Uh, he's intently watching me. <laughs> he, uh, he's not like Joey yet. He's not barking at me constantly, which is good. He's enjoying enjoying the show, and he's got his ball laying there. So he's reminding me we got to play. <laughs> anyway, all right, so, uh, <laughs> uh, again, it, it, it's an easy job, you know, you can slap it in there and not, not do any of the little finer details of the job, but that's the difference between doing the job right and, you know, just kind of uh, shade tree mechanic and the damn thing. Uh, take a little bit of time and, uh, you know, if you're going to play around with shit like this, uh, at least have things like compressed air, you know, uh, most of the right tools, or all the right tools, you need the right tools, but, you know, can of brake clean around and uh, uh, stuff like that, you know, and, and uh, what do you call it, uh, the, uh, oh, Christ, now dialectic uh, grease, which uh, y you'll use that if you play around with electronics on cars or even sensors, anything like that. Uh, always use that, even battery connections uh, to grounds and uh, anything like that, you know. Uh, dielectric grease is wonderful stuff. Got it all over the bike. So uh, there it is. That's uh, the end of my little uh, tutorial, if you want to call it that. And uh, 
have a nice day. We will talk again. Take care.